Hello, <laughs> welcome back to The Handmaidens. Oh my God, it's been so long since I saw you guys. Um, and it is now, I think it, the last I saw you, like summer was starting and now it's already fall. We had, we had such a busy summer, we just didn't get to make it a lot of videos, but we are back. And I've got the perfect thing for you today. We're gonna make an autumn chili in the crock pot that is not my special recipe but it is special i can't tell my special re recipe because it's award winning and then you guys would win all the contests and what would i where would i be in this world okay but i have a special secret chili recipe but this is a little different this is going to be a, a vegetarian um not vegan necessarily, depending on what we put on the toppings. Um, and the reason I'm doing that is because I've been doing something called uh, Segan September, where I just eat seafood and, and vegetables for the month of September. Come October, I'm going to be back eating whatever I want, maybe. Anyhow, so let me start by telling you all the incredible ingredients that is going to go into this easy meal that you just throw in the crock pot and uh, somebody told me or said they didn't say it to me they said it uh, behind my back a little bit that oh crock pot cooking is for people who don't like to cook well there are certain things i don't like to do in co cooking and um but i do like to eat so crock pot cooking is for people who like to eat how's that is this isn't real cooking i don't know maybe it is maybe it isn't you decide all i know it was 40 degrees this morning and it's the perfect time to make take the chill out of the air and put some chili in your belly and it's not only delicious but it is super healthy let me show you what's going to go in here get your i've got a little cup of tea here some lavender chamomile with probiotics. Yep, I can't have any caffeine right now because I got work tomorrow. Go grab yourself something to drink. Maybe uh, some apple cider might be nice for the fall time, okay? And um, let's talk about what's gonna go into this magical batch in our modern cauldron, if you will. Okay, so first of all, we're gonna put in a regular cooking onion. And that's the part I don't like. I don't like chopping vegetables a lot. Um, if I was to have a restaurant, I definitely would want to have a prep cook because I wouldn't want to do that. We got some peppers out of the garden. We're going to go in there. You have some red peppers, some green peppers, jalapeno peppers. We're going to also add uh, pickled jalapenos that I do not pickle myself. Every year I say I'm going to do that, maybe next year. I've got some purple basil and a touch of uh, just a little bit smidge, not dried, fresh um, uh, sage from the garden, okay? And let's go through the spices. This is where it gets all autumn -y. You're not going to believe it. So we're going to have chili powder. Obviously, it's chili. We're going to put in red pepper. We want all the peppers in here. Um, let's see. Let's put in some paprika. And I believe we have... Well, that's curry. That's red curry. That's turmeric. Yep. That's cumin. I thought I had. Where's my cayenne pepper? Okay, we can't. We can't do this without that. Um, we got whole cloves. We've got bay leaves. Bay leaves go in anything. I put in here. A bay leaves going in. The only time I don't would be hot chocolate and mac and cheese. Other than that, it's getting a bay leaf, okay? Because that's just magical. Make a wish. Uh, black pepper. Black pepper. We got to have black pepper because it makes the magical properties of turmeric work. You need them together to get all that anti-inflammatory properties so your joints and muscles feel good. Uh, ground ginger. This is so wonderful. We've got all spice. All spice I used to think was all the spices mixed together. It is not. It is a special onto its own. Maybe a berry, I think. We got ground cinnamon. That's a bark. Ginger's a root. Um, where's our other little guys? Nutmeg. Do I have? 
Oh, that's ground cloves. We'll put that with those. Um, nutmeg. This is the only one ingredient that I want you to use very, a lot of caution with. Nutmeg, as you know, you put it on um, your eggnog, maybe at the holidays and stuff, and maybe you added it a little bit into your gingerbread. Gotta be a little careful with this guy. This comes, it's not from a nut whatsoever. Uh, it is from a seed of a plant. Um, and if you ate a whole seed, you're likely to start hallucinating. Now, I don't want to do this to encourage those who want to have a little fun on the run, uh, because nutmeg, you will might turn into a complete nut bar because it creates a sort of psychosis that can actually be deadly. Don't play around with it. Use it sparingly. If you ever heard a pinch of nutmeg. So we're just going to use just a wee bit in our potion today. Our ginger. Where is my, really? Oh, that's my cayenne pepper right there. I thought it said, there it is. There's my peppers. Okay. Um, so going over here to the other side is we got some garlic. I don't like to chop, so I get my garlic all minced up first. Yes, that's my thing. I don't like to chop. Um, as I said, we're going to use some more jalapeno peppers. Mondo likes it hot. We're going to put in some portobello mushrooms. We're going to put in some squash. Is it starting to sound autumn to you? I got these frozen. If you got some in the garden, get them out, chop them up, put them in your chili. This is good. Can you make chili with meat? Obviously, ground beef, ground pork, ground turkey, whatever. If you want to use crumbles, if you don't eat meat, whatever you want to put in there. We're not going to put any of that. It's going to be just as wholesome because we got all these different kinds of beans in here. We've got pinto beans. We've got chickpeas. We're going to put some diced tomatoes with green chilies in, along with a regular pasta sauce, or roasted garlic, um, black beans, red kidney beans, ripe olives, Whoop, back to the beans, white kidney beans, and some pureed pumpkin, olive oil, which I already got in there. And, of course, my favorite ingredient in all things, if you know me, I like a lot of salt. Okay. What I said, we you could maybe, when you're all done, you might want to top it with cheese, cheddar cheese, whatever you like. I've got some, trying a little Greek yogurt pumpkin spice to go on top. I haven't been really using dairy a lot this month, but dairy is my favorite thing on the entire earth. Okay, so, um, I don't know if I should really be chopping with you. I hate it so dreadfully. I hate to get in a rotten mood. But I'm going to chop up an onion. Only one will do. Do you have to? If you're making this on in a regular uh, big pot on the stove, I would recommend that you saute your vegetables in on a saute in a frying pan aside from the actual, you know, before you get started. And then, then begin to create your chili. This is a crock pot, kids. So this in here, though I got hot oil on the bottom, because olive oil is so good for you. And onions are so good for you. We're gonna just put it right in because it's gonna cook. It's gonna cook for like two hours, four hours, six hours, eight hours. I got it on high heat. It's all going to cook. You don't have to pre-cook anything. Yeah, for those who don't want to cook, the crock pot does do a lot of cooking, but you're going to do all the creating. I'm going to give you um, some, some information about some of the ingredients that are going in here that are so healthy for you. But I'm going to give a word of caution. If you have any health conditions or if you are pregnant, if you take any medications before trying this recipe, check with your doctor. In fact, before doing anything I ever say on The Handmaidens, check with your doctor first, okay? I am not going to be responsible if something happens to somebody. For example, 
nutmeg, I might tell you, is not a nut. Therefore, if you have tree nut allergies, it may be safe for you. But I don't know if you've got nutmeg allergies. I have no idea. And certainly, once again, don't be messing around with this stuff as potent stuff. Um, anyhow, so onions are really good as far as um, they're soothing and help you when you have colds and flus. They're really good for that sort of thing. I like to, I once worked at an Italian restaurant and I was taught to chop them up and like make a pattern on the onion, right? You make a go this way and then this way, right? Make little squares and then you chop off a layer and that makes it like it's diced. You use a food processor. I don't mind the food processor. I don't like to clean the food processor. I guess I'm a little bit lazy. A lot of things I don't like to do, okay? Apparently I don't like to cook, but I like to eat. Um, Anyhow, so onions, you can use more or less. Another thing, when you're cooking along with me, I tend to use a lot, a lot of everything, except the nutmeg. Okay, I use a lot of everything when I'm cooking, so you might want to start low, go slow, go with half what I'm gonna tell you to put into these recipes. I like a lot of spices, why? Honestly, I believe, and some scientists out there here always use a wooden spoon. You're going to see this opposite, but I always stir clockwise just because. Um, uh, I believe the spice of life is, um, is spices. I believe that many 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 diseases that we face today there is a spice that treats it and i believe better than taking the supplements is best to when you eat them okay and i'm pretty certain that you might find some correlation i'm not 100 percent certain between eating spices in your food and longevity and good health now, I'm adding red pepper. We know that red peppers are really good. Again, they've got this vitamin C, but they've got this great color. If you want to eat the most colorful foods possible, you want to include in your diet because they have anti-inflammatory and antioxidant, uh, which means they, they work against all those free radicals in your body and help you prevent other diseases that can run into some trouble. I'm just going to chop it up. We want to put one pepper, put two peppers. You grew your peppers. Oh, great. I had a rotten year with peppers this year. You know why? Because I thought I'd be all trendy and cute and put all my peppers in containers. And my yield was not the same as when I grew them in the garden. Why did I grow them in containers? Because I saved my garden for doing other things like growing gourds. And I let the gourds take over the entire garden. I'm really excited. I'm fascinated watching them grow. And if they make it, if these gourds are big, but if I can figure out how to dry them out, they're going to be birdhouses and bowls and all sorts of wonderful things from the gourds. I'm really, really jazzed about that. But next year peppers are going back in the ground because I didn't get, I mean, look at that guy. He's kind of cruddy. He's got a bad spot on him. Don't, don't be afraid of the bad spots. That's, you cut them out. Work around them. Okay, so stirring, stirring. You don't have to. This is all going to cook together. Don't you worry, folks. Just get it in there. Onions and peppers and oil. That's not so extraordinary, right? When you start adding the spices, that things get exciting. Um, I had, if you get bored, you know, do yourself a favor. Treat yourself to reading up on the history of some of these spices. That's an exciting day. Yep, it's come to that point in my life where reading about spices is very exciting. Um, the reason why it's so exciting is the history of spices 
Remember all that, you know, where was Columbus going? And he was looking for, uh, you know, the West Indies or the in or India, this quick route. That's because the whole world was going bananas over spices because they were worth so much money. And nobody was quite sure how to get them. And they wanted them because, for example, some of the spices I have here, Back in Roman times, would um, cost you for a pound of, let's say, cinnamon or something like that, four years salary. Imagine, take what you make, multiply times four, and you get a pound of cinnamon. What do we do now? Man, a lot of us will go to the dollar store is what we'll do. So things have changed. But what were they? So they weren't these, I'm talking Spain. Portugal, the Dutch, they were willing to fight over this. They got grimy and stuff over getting these, getting these spices. Why? What was so, what was so important? Because the taste of their food? I, I think not because people, people like, um, you know, you ate food. You got used to what you ate. I'm thinking that there was much other benefits medicinal benefits for a while only the royals got to eat the spices you know the most the richest of the rich it could cost you three or four sheep to buy some cinnamon or ginger can you imagine three or four sheep you ever buy a sheep today you ask elisa they're not cheap sheep sheep are expensive those were people's livelihoods. You trade three, four sheep, so you get a pound of spice. That spice had better be pretty important. They, um, you know, nearly started wars. They did corrupt things, trying to corner the market on the spices. The um, Dutch, I don't know, what is it that, you know, the English, they had a, what is that trade company, the Indian trade company? I forget what it's called. Um, anyhow. They were everybody, people were getting rich off these things. Because why? I think that they believed. They've had proof. Maybe people that did ingest these things did live longer because they are often used in treating upset stomachs, believe it or not. Um, you say, all oh, these peppers, how could that be? Um, but they would treat uh, right now. The biggest thing is that I would think that'd be important with today's culture is that a lot of these uh, ingredients here are anti-inflammatory, but they're also controlled blood sugar. In almost all of these things, including the squash we're going to put in here and stuff, and the kidney beans especially, and these spices can aid in weight loss. So... Imagine how back, you know, 100 years ago, 200, 300, 400, 1,000, how lovely those people looked that got their hands on the spices when they were healthy and they were maybe, maybe felt better, were able to, to kind of uh, ward off some of the diseases at the time because they had strengthened immune systems. I'm all for anything that will help me lose weight and not that I'm big on uh, trust me I don't really care like that uh, big on image I don't care what people really look like I'm old enough to not care I did at some point but I'm more concerned about avoiding things like type 2 and type 3 diabetes type 3 diabetes especially because it's linked with diseases like Alzheimer's and stuff. And that's something I really don't want to get in my life. I'm just, I've just decided, you know, girl, you gotta watch it. You're no kid anymore. You know, you're, you're big old grown up girl. You got to pay attention, quit with too much comfort food. Chili, in my opinion, is a comfort food that doesn't do the damage as some other, some other, uh, dishes like, you know, my deadly mac and cheese. Um, yes, that's good. 
once a year on the holidays. Um, or if you're not prone to, uh, if you're like a little on the leaner, thinner side and you need to put on some weight, you put that, check out my recipe. If you go through the handmaidens, you'll find a recipe for an incredible, easy, because it's using an Instapot mac and cheese. So anyhow, so you're gonna make this big pot of chili. If you're gonna make a huge batch, if you don't have a huge family, but you wanna make it all at once, that's right away. As soon as it's done cooking, that's a good time to freeze it. It's good for like four days in the refrigerator and about three to four months in the freezer. Get it right away. As soon as it cool it, cook it, cool it, and right away put it in the containers for freezing. Okay? You want it, you want to make sure that you're not bottling up any bacteria. Or you wouldn't put it in a bottle, whatever you use, your freezer containers. I'm not big on freezing. I'm lousy with that. I tend to not eat the stuff I freeze. I gotta get better. I should get better. I might get better. I might be forced to get better. What if the whole world falls apart? And boy, oh boy. Oh yeah, see it's even just cooking it. It's not so slow, slow cooker my eye. This stuff is cooking up. You don't really need to worry about having teeny tiny pieces because it's gonna cook away. They're gonna cook down, they're gonna disappear if you don't like, you know, really chunky stuff. Here's a this a jalapeno but it's not the same in my opinion if it's not not um not pickled it doesn't taste the same anyhow so you're gonna say that's too hot for me i don't do well maybe you don't then this might not be the recipe or you know yourself it's a crock pot. Put in what you want, what you tolerate. That's the fun of making, of cooking, of not cooking, cooking, or whatever we're going to call this. That's the fun of it. You get to decide what goes into your special recipe. I'm just giving you an idea of somebody that goes over the top. Me. I go over the top for a lot of things. Let's see. I'm going to cut that bad boo-boo out there. These in here. Yeah, they're all going to cook down. They're going to be wonderful. Peppers are really very good for you. They're good for, obviously, they're good for your sinuses. If you suffer from sinus trouble. And they're good for your, you know, increase your metabolism. They've got that sort of thermogenic type thing going on. Increases how you burn calories. Um, it's crazy enough. What is that? They have people that, that sell ugly vegetables. There it is. Pop that in there. Oh, and then when it's cooking, when it's cooking, your stuff is cooking for the few hours. And I'm just going to tear these in. Basil for good luck. Yep. Where basil grows, no evil goes. Where basil lives, no evil is. Yeah, it's magical stuff. Um, a lot of shamans different cultures will include herbs and stuff in their rituals and i think i really think that's because of the actual genuine scientific health benefits that may have been viewed as magical or maybe we view the scientific benefits they are magical and we just seem to explain them through science but the thing is that people you know, do better, live longer, are healthier, have less diseases. Um, sage, the very same sage that we make sage bundles with for, and I have some drying over there in my window. Um, good for cooking and eating, delicious, delicious. Just put that in there. Oh my goodness, it looks so good. I don't know if we can't get a close-up. Mondo, is there any way we can't see in here? Can we? Can we see at all? I don't know. Can you see that? Uh, there we go. Okay, look at that. How delicious and beautiful. The colors. How great. Thank you. Thank you. I'm going to throw in here right now all these wonderful mushrooms if you can study up on how mushrooms benefit you um these are like you know these are powerful 
ingredients in food. As long as you're not eating a whole bunch of processed food, a lot of stuff with, um, you know, white flour, white sugar, uh, the stuff in the middle of the store that's there for a long time. Get used to eating your own food. I'm not so brave as to, as to pick my own mushrooms, but I know people who are. They are very brave in doing that. Okay, so that's... Uh, that's going in there. I might as well get these squash in there while we can. That's going to give it. This squash is um, butternut squash. You could use any kind of squash. You could cut up pumpkins. You do everything. But that's going to give it sort of that autumn. Oh, it's fantastic. That autumn flavor. That extra special texture. You know that if you eat chili. We're not even just chili. If you eat beans and rice together. You can make rice on the side with this. Um, that creates a complete protein, just the two of them. Like an egg is a complete protein. If you mix rice and beans, it, it creates the combination of those, makes a complete protein. So we got all these other things going on in here that is just so wonderful. Okay, so let's start adding some of the spices. We're letting that go, cook a little bit. We're going to start with... Adjust these. Don't get shocked. Don't faint. Don't pass out. Adjust these how you want. I am going to not use that one. I'm going to use two thirds of cups of chili powder. You go, oh, mama mia. Yep, that's right. I am going to put all that in there. These things, these sorts of, I believe, um, like eight protect against like colon cancer. They're good for your heart. They're good for your digestion. If you go like, oh, but I've got hemorrhoids. All right, maybe not so much pepper. Tone it back a bit. But this is chili, chili pepper. Chili peppers are really very good for you. Okay, and we're gonna put, now we're gonna get a little more conservative. And I'm just going to be throwing like one teaspoon of red. I might add these later because I, as if we've cooked together before, you know, I like to cook and taste, cook and taste, cook and taste, cook and taste. And then I decide when it's enough. Um, we're going to have cayenne pepper. All this, you might find out like, hey, I bet you if you ate this, included this like in your diet, chili, but these spices, like once a month, twice a month, you might find improved, you know, if you tested your numbers, improved numbers with cholesterol and blood sugars and A1Cs and all that stuff. A little paprika. This is good. I was just talking about how I used to make Hungarian goulash a lot when I was younger. Young wife. I don't make that anymore. I did love it. I don't tolerate pasta so much like I used to. And a teaspoon. I just put a teaspoon of everything, like I said, outside of this guy. That was like three quarters of a cup. Teaspoon of everything. Oh, I think I'm going to sneeze. I am this. Here, we got some red curry powder. I don't like curry that much, so I'm going to go down to like a quarter with that, okay? This is a quarter teaspoon of curry. Well, it was a little more. I'm not exact. You don't got to be exact. It's not cooking cooking we're doing today. We're having fun. We're making, we're building something. Turmeric. We all, everybody's all about, I want turmeric milk. I want turmeric tea. I want turmeric in my turmeric. We're going to be, that's good stuff for you. Here we'll put, we got the, Whatever, we got a simply organic tumor here. I'll put about a teaspoon of that in there. Let's see how we're doing. Um, and we're gonna cumin. Cumin's important. That's like kind of important in all chilies. Let me put that top there. We'll put two. We're gonna put a teaspoon of that as well. Okay. Adjust as you must. If you hate it, don't add it. If you don't have it, don't add it. Don't let that stop you from making chili. You make what do. Make 
create, tell me what you put in, tell me what you didn't put in. Okay, so it's getting, it's getting there. I think I'm going to pop in a little bit of sauce in here. Put this in. Give it something to cook with while we're doing this. I, my biggest fear always is that I never have enough big enough crock pot to put all the wonderful things in that I want to put in. It's all the spices, but sometimes I run into trouble with the beans and stuff. You're going to love this when you make this. Have fun. Go make, have fun shopping. Think of how many different ingredients you can throw into here. You can put zucchini. You got zucchini. Use your garden tomatoes in there. Throw them in. Put your pumpkins. Put your squash. Put carrots in there if you want. I'm not putting any carrots, but you could. Put that. that you know why? All that beta carotene, all that orange stuff. Oh, my God. You're going to be seeing for miles. It's so good for you. Wonderful. Okay, how far have we got? Yeah, we got the cumin. We got our eggs, peppers. We got the whole front row. We got half the back row. Here we go, just for the fun of it. We're going to put in a couple. You know what they used to use? You know what they use cloves for. Mmm, smells so good. You know what they use? They use, we're going to put just a pinch of cloves in there because we're going to use some dry cloves too. Some ground cloves. Obviously, they discovered these for fresh breath and dental stuff. Don't you know about that? You got a toothache. Put a little clove oil there or something. Okay. I won't, won't cook anything without these babies. Bay leaves. These are it sometimes. I burn these. Sometimes we write wishes on them and throw them in the bonfire. The equinox is a good time to have a bonfire. That's good. It's always good. And put that back there. If you want, you could make your chili. If you want, when you need to get it a little juicy, you could make, um, put a little hard cider in there. That would be nice. Or you could put a little regular apple cider. Make it a little sweet. Mono doesn't like sweet stuff too much. Neither do I. That smells delicious. What do we got? We got to have our black pepper to make our turmeric work for us, right? And black peppers. One of the peppers. There we go. Ooh, ooh, lordy. Delicious. Okay. Keep stirring. That's the fun. We're creating some. Oh, my God. It looks, I need it right now. It looks good. But the goodness really comes in when you let it cook for a while because these seasons, these, the more you cook, you remember, you know, Somebody that's all about the sauce. Italian uh, cooks know that you got that sauce cooking all day. Those seasonings are having a chance to open up and like, whoo, they don't just like one time you're done. They have to open up and work with one another and create just, just wonderful, magical stuff. How long do the people in the Italians... Those sorts of nations, Mediterranean, the Mediterranean diet. What? I believe it's the spice. Now, ginger is very good for you and is thought to, in magical realms, these sorts of ginger and cinnamon and, and uh, the peppers and stuff. Those sorts of things are supposed to, to those who believe, attract love and money. Well, let me, let me ask, if you were the top, tip top, healthy and beautiful, glowing skin from eating all these spices and stuff, I bet you you would attract love and money. You'd have better opportunities, you'd be healthier, you could do, be the top of your game at work, you could find the best mate possible because you'd be just so vivacious and lovely and healthy. Um, allspice, yeah, the allspice is not an allspice, it's a spice into itself. Mm, I just love, when this is cooking, you don't need to have a scented candle burning, though I love to make my own scent of candles, Mono makes them. Um, you, the smell of your own cooking. I know sometimes they say when, you know, oh, Burn a scented candle when you're going to sell your, smell your, smell your house, sell your house so that it smells like you got apple pie cooking. Cooking apple pie. That's even better. 
Win, 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 win. We put a whole teaspoon of that in there, all spice. That's because I got excited. <laughs> That's good. You can't. You'll taste it later go, oh, not enough of this. Too much of that. Keep a journal when you're cooking. Write it down. Write what you do. Okay? Oh, heavens have mercy. Cinnamon. Cinnamon is an interesting uh, spice in that all cinnamon we get, most cinnamon we get is not actually cinnamon. It is usually cassia from China, which looks like cinnamon. It's darker and more robust. True cinnamon from Ceylon is, I'm going to, now I'm going to leave it like that. True cinnamon is a little lighter in color. It's bark. It's good. We're used to in the United States the the uh, cassia herb that's like cinnamon. So like a very similar tree. It's just comes from a different part of the world. The Spice Islands. I noticed that one of these things was named, the company was named Spice Islands. That's what they were looking for. These are all like Indonesia. Um, I, I'm going to get this wrong. I don't know. Now I think it gets spices from Vietnam, Indonesia, China, Sri Lanka. You know, these are places they didn't know how to get to in those big ships that had them land. Then they brought the spices to the islands. And Spain wanted them. Portugal wanted them. The Dutch wanted them later on. The fight continued. Did I put in? <laughs> see, why? Well, let me see me put a double dose of this in. I'm going to put a quarter teaspoon because it's a big pot. Oh, not me. That's enough. Don't even, should it be even less? Went overboard. Okay, we might be seeing pink elephants on parade tonight. There we go. Stirring it up. I'm not kidding. I'm not responsible for it. I don't want to hear, oh my God, I can't take the whole thing of, have the whole thing of not making. Now I'm not here anymore. Please don't tell me that. Get a little bit of sauce back down there on the bottom. There we go. Um, another very big important, yeah, here she goes. Too much. I'm going to put a whole... I'm not going to be shy. Quarter cup of garlic. Next day in October. Whoa, there we go. Right in there. Why? Gee whiz! Well, you know, people have just a garlic soup. Oh, all these spices are already activating on working. Working. Um, Garlic, yes, for your immune system. Remember that nasty bugaboo we had going around? Is it coming around again? I didn't want to say it. You know. Oh, that disease that put the world on its ear. Get ready now. You want to add that garlic to your soups to protect, prevent um, these, these diseases from catching you off guard. Okay, now I wanted to put some, some actual pickled jalapenos in there. Yeah. I'll just pull a few off the top because Mondo's favorite. Mondo would eat uh, jalapeno sandwiches if given a choice. Put some of those in there. That's fine. It's good. Good for you. Vitamin C, pepper is good for you. I'm actually in a little runny nose from all those spices. Heaven have mercy. Goodness gracious, that's a lot. Let me wash my hands over here. Um, always wash your hands when you're cooking. Always wash your hands all the time because it's that bugaboo time. We don't want to spread this. We don't want to go back in the lockdown in the future. Please, God. No. Um, um, Germex. Okay, where were we? So we did that. We did this. We'll put a few. We just put some diced tomatoes in there. I really do not have any tomatoes. I have some that are all gone. Um, if you have, this is a great time to get rid of those leftover tomatoes. Perhaps you already canned them or, or did whatever you do. 
with your tomatoes. I'm using store-bought. I'm sure many of you have, what do I do with all these tomatoes? Make some chili. Make some chili. There you go. We're making autumn chili, just distinctly autumn flavor. Yep. Why? Now, <clears throat> we have the beans, pinto beans. These are, beans are high in fiber, great for your digestion, great for preventing colon cancer. You can use the liquid in the bean to be the liquid in there. You don't have to, I usually save some. Use some liquid, some I pour out. I should be putting that in a bucket and put adding that back into my garden with some pinto beans in. Here's what I worry. I'm going to add, mm, 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 mm. this is as hearty as you get. You're not gonna miss the meat if that's if you follow this recipe. I am going to add the big kidney beans because that takes up the space, and I'm gonna put that in with the liquid. Mm-hmm. Because it's gonna mix juice, it's gonna mix, it's not bad. It's gonna mix in there with all the seasonings you have. And Make it nice and juicy. Okay, juicy goosey. There we go. Oh, we still got plenty of space to put all the other freshest ingredients in there. And then we're going to let it cook. And then, like I said, you could go out and plant your autumn bulbs, maybe. Maybe you want to paint a picture. Maybe you want to start a knitting project. Take the dog for a walk. It's almost nice enough, not not yet, it's not peak color, but you could uh, go looking at the sights, go on a hike and uh, enjoy uh, the leaves changing colors. I can see from my window a patch in one tree that's changing colors, very interesting. Mm -hmm. Save to catch a leaf falling. Good luck, put it in your pocket, maybe draw it, maybe preserve it. Okay, we got some black beans. These I like to drink because they do give it a spooky color. They get too dark. Because, you know, 90% of, of eating and cooking, not cooking, is presentation. Okay, so we want to, we want it to look not too, maybe more, more towards... Halloween, it was like a darker, blacker chili. Just using kidney beans, that would be fun, right? Spooky. Well, kidney or black beans are one of my absolute favorite. I love them in almost anything with any dish. Delicious. Oh, they just blend so nicely. This is like, how could you resist? Unless, of course, you don't like chili. But, so good. Okay. So, we got that. Should add the chickpeas. Chickpeas are my least favorite. Some people's most favorite. I think Janelle, she's a chickpea lover. I have a bunch of chickpeas because I was going to make um, my own hummus following Laura's recipe. I think she tells us how to make hummus. If she doesn't, she should, but I think she does. I gotta check. I don't even know what's on this station anymore. By the way, if you're new to this station, welcome. Thanks for watching. If you're still watching, pat yourself on the back because boy, oh boy, can I go on and on and on and on. If you want to do yourself a favor and see what other crazy things we come up with here on the handmaids, it's not just cooking, it's every sort of simple living tips and the most the most things that you want to Google. How do you do this? How do you do that? What do you, you know, sorts, sorts of ideas, DIYs, cooking, things to make your own cleaning products, things to, how to have some nice entertainment. How about learning how to ice fish? That's always nice. You'll find it all here. Hit subscribe. Hit the notification button. Oh, there goes the chickpeas in there. 
just so beautiful to the eye. I can't even tell you how gorgeous it is. Um, hopefully you can, we're going to be able to see. Then these, I was surprised at the Catalini white kidney beans are extra revered for health uh, things. I guess that's why they make that like navy bean soups and stuff like that. But they say that's extra, 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 extra. Um, so very good. I'm gonna, how are we doing there? Can we, do we need any more goo? We'll, we'll put one, eh, now I'm gonna pour it out. If you ever need, you know, like I said, you can always add some apple juice, apple cider, hard cider. You need it whatever. Oh, a little bit of pumpkin spice beer, anything. Those things, you can always add alcoholic beverages to your cooking in moderation. If you need a little juice, people always cook with wine. French use wine in their cooking all the time. Um, as, as do many other cultures where wine comes from. Italy, although I believe, what is that, like veal marsala, right? Chicken marsala. I believe that's made with wine. Okay. Um, ripe olives. I like to add olives to everything because they're so darn good for you. They are, they've got the right kind of fats. Normally I don't do this. I knew I was making this for you guys. I will add uh, ripe olives whole to about everything. Salads, eggs. Um, so what do I do? Add it to. They go into chili. Um, I can't even think. I always adding them. I got the sliced ones fancy. <laughs> Normally I don't. Okay, we got lots of cans. There's lots of things you can do with cans. You can make. Can tap nails in there and make these wonderful uh, um, uh, votives or, or sorts of put candles in them, hang them outside, great decorations, spray paint them black, yeah, put a, just put a drawing on there and there's tin, tap the nails through, put the candles in and put them in a, where it's safe and not going to burn down or you can get those, I'm not a fan, I think that's a I know a lot of you use them, those sorts of candles that are battery operated. That's way too much plastic for my liking. I'm like, well, don't like them. We're all different. We like things, we don't like things. Oh, I like, just went by it. A home fashion green pickup truck, the kind that you could have a bale of hay. Oh my God, I love that. That was cute. I would like that. Cute, old fashioned, you know, like a red truck. Turquoise truck, like that. Anybody want to send me one? I'll take it. There we go. Now we got our black olives. So just so pleasing to the eye, so hearty. Mondo's going to want to eat this right away, but he's going to have to wait because it's got to cook. The longer it cooks, the better it tastes. You can watch your first one will be like taste so-so. And then the next one's, hmm. Now here's for the uh, big... He's going, no, you're kidding. Usually I take a little corn flour when I'm done. My chili might be a little, and I'll take a little corn flour, a little masa, and put it in and thicken it up at the end after it's been cooking, right? That's when it usually has some meat in there and stuff, so you get the fats and stuff. And put that up and it makes it nice and thick. This baby is as thick as can be. We could cook this for a long time and then add the pumpkin puree. We're going to do it right now. We're going to see how it tastes. Later on, when you're not here, I'll be adjusting and I'll be going like, that needs more salt, doesn't it, Mondo? Mondo and I both use a lot of salt. We're not salt sensitive. If you are salt sensitive, do not use a lot of salt. Well, what is she doing? Oh, whatever. She's doing what she does. My blood pressure happens to be perfect. Yours may not. Follow your doctor's instructions, not Denise's, because I'll get you to all sorts of trouble. Okay, so here we go. So this would be really good to add at the end for 
thickening, okay? Because it's like real thick. But we're gonna cook it. We're gonna watch it. I'm putting it in now, the thickening, the pumpkin, which is gonna be like, is this chili or is this pumpkin pie? This is so wonderful. If you want, and I'm not gonna do it because I'm trying to not have sugar in my diet. If you want to have a very sweet one, I suggest you add some brown sugar, some molasses, maybe a little bit of honey. We're not gonna do that. If I did that, Mondo would be like, Mom, what did you do? He doesn't really, doesn't like sweet stuff. Uh, pumpkin, so good for you. Oh God, there's a delicious pumpkin pie recipe. If you have your own pumpkin, stop just wasting them. Cook them up. It's pumpkin spice season. And this is going to be pumpkin spice season for a long time. We're going to be enjoying it. All these seasonings right through to the winter months. Cozy time is coming. The hygiene where we're going to get be so cold we can't leave. And we're going to bunker down and bloody blah, blah, blah. There you go. We're going to... Mondo, can we get a good picture of this? Can we... I'm gonna go. I got a lot to clean. Not too much. I'm gonna just recycle all that stuff and put my seasonings away. That's it. No other pots and pans for cooking, not cooking. Let's see if we can get a bit of a close up. If you can see how delicious that is. All it has to do is cook for two, four, six, eight hours. Cook it at night. Have it ready in the morning. Cook it in the morning. Have it ready at night. Cook it now. Keep it on high. You can turn down the temperature to adjust how long you want to cook it. You can put it on low, slow, cook it for, make it an all day thing. Enjoy the aroma, enjoy the health benefits, enjoy the magic, enjoy the fall weather. Enjoy you, just life itself and the spice of life. And it's been great meeting with you. We'll see you again soon with some other great fall activities. Uh, until then, Hit like if you like the video, subscribe please, it always helps us out and you'll get to see us not miss an episode. You have a great day, take care and enjoy that simple living. Bye bye.